Okay. Daniel Frost. Let's hold him up before God because sometimes we can't pray for ourselves in situations. We need others to hold us up. Okay, so... Okay, Sister Teresa, ear infection. Speak his name, Sister Ray. Okay, let's remember this. Remember the word this morning? It's a precious thing, the word of God. We're so blessed to have it. So let's just bow our hearts and right where we're at. Let's, let's just go before God together. Heavenly Father, as I bow my heart before you this morning, Lord, I came to teach your word, Lord, and to honor you. But Lord, we want to petition you this morning for the needs, God, that was spoken here, God, because, Lord, without you, Lord, we won't make it. But, God, you're our blesser, you're our healer, you're our provider, you're our portion, you're everything to us this morning. You said that you knew our needs before we ever asked, but you, but you also told us to bring them to you through prayer and through supplication. And as we pray one for another this morning, Lord, I ask you, God, to meet every need, as each name that was spoken, God, body, soul, and spirit. And Lord, we petition you together this morning for Jerusalem and Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God, because Lord, we love Jerusalem. And that's a gateway to blessings this morning is through Jerusalem. And I ask you this morning, God, to defeat the enemies of Israel, God. And Lord, let them, let them live in peace in Jesus' name. Bless the word I pray this morning, God, that you'll not only let us hear it, Lord, but place it in our heart, God, that when we, we need it, Lord, it'll come up, Lord, because that's your purpose for your word this morning is to lead and guide us. Thank you this morning for each and every one that's here. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. My lesson this morning is a little lengthy, so I'm going to get started. Uh, you know, during all, all the problems in the world, and I've been teaching a lot in that area, but God kind of instructed me this week to teach on something different. Right now, I want to teach about the Bible, the Father's love letter. It's a time when we need this right now because we've got enough troubles in the world. And I know everyone's talking about it and everyone's wondering about it. But the Bible is one book. I think around 44 authors written over a period of 20 centuries. But it's 66 books making one book. And I, I like that this morning. The amazing thing, that all 66 books tells us a seamless story. It's a seamless story about the God who made us, loves us, redeems us, and has got a future for us. I don't care how, how, how black it gets, how dark it gets, God's in control. He has a future for us. And we're not to worry, we're to trust him in everything that we do. Not just one thing, but everything. One of the first things that we learn from the Bible, that God's in control. He's omnipotent. All power, unlimited authority. Authority. He's omnipresent, everywhere at the same time. It's hard to understand this, but God's an awesome God. Omniscient. Has all knowledge, understanding. He's aware of everything. And he's also very sovereign. There's nothing like it. There is no other. Anything to even compare him to. He's understanding. Some know him, some don't. You know him because you're here this morning. You, and if you don't know him, you're in a good place. But I thank God I believe I'm teaching to the Sunday school class this morning. So what does the love of, of the Father begin with? At conception. Sister Robin, put that photo up that I gave you. This is where it all begins. I want you to look at the baby on the left. It's just as valuable as the baby on the right. The world doesn't understand this, but you understand it. This ought to do something. If the world could just grasp this, 
This would do something to prevent the judgment of God upon the, upon the nation. Because this baby on the left, God loves it from conception just like the one that's been born. I know, I know a lot of the world doesn't understand that. So let, but let's, uh, let's look at Psalms. I want to look at uh, one, 139 verses 1, 2, and 3. We'll look at it together. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. What he's saying here is, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. Isn't that awesome this morning? You may not know me. He wants us to know him, but he says, I know you. I know everything about you. Let's look at verses 2. Thou knowest my downsetting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. What he's saying here is, I know when you sit down and when you rise up. God knows everything about you and I. This is a time in life right now when all the troubles in the world that we need to focus on how much God loves us. And I'm telling you what, it'll bring peace like never before. Let's look at verses 3. I'm going to move hurriedly this morning. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. He's saying here that I'm familiar with all of our ways. He knows everything about us. He knows the he knows ways probably he's not pleased with. I need to improve on. He knows ways that, that we show that we love him very much. I don't have all my scriptures on the paper this morning, Brother Dale, but Matthew 10, 30, he says, but the very hair of your head, the hairs of your head are numbered. Now I'm telling you, a God that can know the number of the hairs on our head is familiar with us. Genesis 127, it says this, For you were made in my image and in my likeness. No other creature on earth is made like you and I are. We're made in his image and in his likeness. No two people, very rarely, other than twins, very rarely do you see two people look alike. Each one of us got different features. But that's an awesome God. <laughs> is it not? Acts 17, 28, in me you live and move and have your being, for you are my offspring. In me you move, you live, and you have your being. You are my offspring. We're in his image. We're like him. That's why someday we'll be with him, and we'll know him as he is, and, and we'll have the mind of Christ. In Jeremiah 1 and 5, he said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew. That's why I wanted to show that picture. At the time of conception, Jeremiah said he knew me. Have you ever wondered when you look back, even before you knew God, or maybe some of you knew him for all your life, but I didn't, how he took care of you when you didn't know him? He lets me reminisce and go back to where he's been with me, and I didn't even know him. But he made a way for me, preserved my life, protected me through car accidents, let me live, and things of this nature. Uh, I think I put up Psalms 139, 15, 16. I want to look at that real quick. My, stuff, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Uh, what he's saying here is you watched... You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb. That's what he's saying right here. He, he's watching over the unborn. He's with them as, as the mother's carrying them in the womb. He, God's there. That's why it's such a sin to take a life. Let's look at verses 16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect. Unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuous, which in continuous were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. Now let me break it down for you. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Is he awesome or is he not awesome? We got somebody looking out for us that's going to never leave us or forsake us. He'll never fail us. 
We need this in the time that we're living because we see such sorrow in our land, such troubles. Acts 17, 26, he said this, I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. That's hard to comprehend. And I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. God placed people in different nations. He knew which nation you'd be born into. Are you thankful to be born into America this morning? He knew which nation. That's why sometimes, I don't, I don't want to teach here right now, but sometimes I have trouble with all the border issues because God, God put boundaries. He talks about that in Deuteronomy. Psalms 139 and 14 said, You and I are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, when you're... I don't like to think about getting out of the shower because the other day Jan threw a cold cup of water on me just as I was getting dried off. <laughs> she said she was paying me back for some stuff, I mean stuff. I, I don't remember all that mean stuff. But. <laughs> but when you get out of that shower and you look in the mirror... You look at your hands. And, aren't we fearfully and wonderfully made? Like nothing else. Lisa, you're laughing, but it was so cold. <laughs> and I was already dried off getting dressed or fixing to get dressed. Let's look at 1 John chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, children of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Let's look at verses 2. Behold, now are we the children of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now, that's a wonderful promise of hope that you and I have. The older you get, the better hope it is. I promise it is. You just, you, just get, you just get closer to him the older you get because you know life is short. Uh, in John 1, the Gospel of John, chapters 1, verse 12. Let's look at that one. But as many have received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of the children of God, even to them that believe on his name. I had a question I'd wrote down in my notes. I probably lost it. Well, here it is. The question the, world of, the, the question the Word of God is asking is, will you be my child? That's what He's asking. He's telling us now how much He's loved us from the time of conception. Now He's saying, would you be my child? Think about that. So where do we begin at? If, 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 uh, if we're going to... Say you came this morning and you didn't know Lord, the Lord. Where would you begin at if you wanted to be His child? Let's look at Romans 10, verses uh, 11 and 12. For the Scripture says, Whosoever believeth on Him shall not be ashamed. I guess I got the wrong verse on there. Let's look at verses 12. I got the wrong verse, but here's what it says. It's in Romans chapters 10, 9 and 10 is where it's at. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's where we begin. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's where it all begins. If we believe, if we put our faith active, then who, we can all be saved. That's where we begin at right there. And I'm thankful for that today. I know you've done cross that road and you're serving. But then what? Then what? Okay, we've accepted him. By faith, we believed him. We believed that he died for us, that he, was, that he rose from the dead. So then what? Then we've got to put up with it. We've got to begin with the three P's. I've taught you about the three P's before. Now, I'm not talking about insurance. Price, price, price. I'm not talking about that. 
So we, we, we know we're not, we're not talking about that. So let me get out of here. The, the price of his presence is time. Time. Time for what? Time to go to church. Time to find time to appear up for church, to learn about God, to fellowship together, show your love one for another, to share, to, to, to share things about your life, like if you need prayer, to pray one for another. So you see, time is something that God expects us to also study His Word at home. Study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that not need, that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. What's the purpose of His presence? The purpose of His presence is to change us. Do you remember when He came into your heart? How He began to change you? <laughs> yeah, that's right, brother Bobby. Hallelujah! Boy, did He ever change me! Did He ever change me? He came into my heart. And Called me to teach his word, and my wife thought you'd gone crazy. She knew my whole life. She said, You can't do that. I said, I'm going to do my best. And I'm still trying today. But you see, the purpose of his presence when he comes into our life is to change us. I know you've probably heard this over and over, but we need it today. We need it today. Okay, the product of his presence. What's the product of his presence? Righteousness? Holiness? You remember when you became, began to be sanctified and received all the holiness, the righteousness of God? So that's my three Ps this morning. So that's, that's what we do after we receive him into our heart. Then we begin. Because the gospel is powerful. See, this word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Romans 1 and 16 says that, that I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it's the power of God unto salvation. See, it's, it's, it's awesome. What this word will do is awesome. It's the most precious book I ever held in my hand. The only book that I love with all my heart, mind, and soul. I like other books. I don't read many, but I like them. So, but the gospel... The gospel of, of Jesus Christ contains two forces. I know you've heard me mention this in the months back. But it contains, first of all, the person of Jesus Christ. What is the person of Jesus Christ? What does he do? He creates our peace, for one thing. How do remember when he came in, you became, the peace of God became present with. So the person of Jesus Christ creates our peace. What did Jesus say in John 14, 27? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Peace not that the world giveth, but my peace I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's the peace of God. When you experience this, I know I've had bad news come to me before that broke my heart, but the peace of God kept me. And I gave it to him and he he, he pulled me through it, you see. The person of Jesus Christ prepares you and I for eternity. How many like that this morning? You know, as we see people leave this world, it's not all over. It's just beginning for them. Eternity. It's hard to wrap my mind around that. But, but the person of Jesus Christ prepares you and I for eternity. That's awesome. You know, as you get older like some of us are, not y'all, but me and Brother Don over here, Brother A.J., <laughs> Brother Hicks, I hadn't left you out. I'll go, e I'll go easy on the rest of you. We don't want to bother Brother Tony because brother Tony, he's pushing 80. Brother Tony says, don't be reading my mail. <laughs> what about the, the, the principles of Jesus Christ? We know what the person of Jesus Christ does, but what about the principles of Jesus Christ? The principles of Jesus Christ, for one thing, it creates our prosperity. If we put the principles of the Word of God into practice, it will create prosperity. 
Nothing wrong with prosperity in God's life, in our life, because God's given it to us. Prosperity, prosperity is enough of God's provisions to complete your assignment on earth. That's what prosperity is. It's not hoarding and being greedy. It's not the love of money. 3 John verses 2 says, Beloved brethren, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. God's prosperity for his people is, is when we apply the principles of, of God's word to our life. Like Luke 6.38, Give and it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, so God calls men to give unto your bosom. That's prosperity. I've had men give unto me before. I don't know if they're Christian or not, but they just showed me, told me and, and gave unto me. That had to be God. See, the principles of, of, God, of Jesus Christ prepares us for life on earth. That's what the principles are. It just prepares us for life on earth. Uh, what's some more principles of God's word that we got to do to be happy and content? Love one another. Love our neighbor as ourselves. That's very hard. That's not easy. That only comes through Christ. I know I've had neighbors that I just get so aggravated at I couldn't hardly handle it, especially at Halloween. I bought this house over on Echo, and the only thing I didn't like about that neighborhood was my neighbor right across from me. She had more stuff in that yard of caskets, skeletons, horrible stuff. But I, I got to love her. And do you know, that I had a, my wife had a talk with her, and I listened. It was pretty good. They didn't, they didn't fight. They, they didn't fight or nothing. And you know she stopped it? She stopped it. It's amazing. I lived there three years, and after one year, she stopped. And she said, I think I'll get my, all that out of my garage, too. I said, what a blessing. So we began to help her. So see, what about loving our neighbor, loving one another? Uh, just a lot of great things. First of all, we've got to do the first and great commandment. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven 37 says, The love of the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul. That's the first thing we do. And the second's like this. Love thy neighbor as thyself. See, that's some of the principles of God's word that will bring not only the peace of Christ in our life, but it will bring prosperity unto us. God will meet our every need. So you see, the principles, the person of Jesus Christ and the principles of Jesus Christ is so important that we've got to grasp them and we've got to live by them. So you see, that's one of the things I wanted to teach this morning. Uh, what about do unto others as, as you'd have them do unto you? That's something that we that's something that'll only come through Jesus Christ. Now let me tell you this little story. I'm in the flea market. I'm looking for a lamp that uh, push button. I like them that just push the button. I don't like to reach up here when they get old and can't hardly turn them. See, we're looking around and I find boy, they're hard to find. I found one. And it didn't have no push button, and it didn't have no button up here. And I thought, good Lord, this might be a touch tone. Uh, is that what you call them? That's what it was. God found it for me. But I didn't know if it worked because it's in a flea market, and the shade was loose. So Janet bars a bulb out of another light. And it works. It worked. Now, it's time to pay out. And that bulb's in my lamp, but it don't belong in my lamp. And I said, Janet, this bulb belongs to this lamp up here. Oh, what does it matter? Let's get out of here. I said, well, I'd like it if you'd take it back there and put it right where you found it. And she did. Now, that's doing unto others. You'd have them do unto you. I didn't want that man to come in and say, why ain't my light burning here in my booth? Because that's how they do. See, we've got to do even little things like that. We've got to do unto others as you'd want them to do unto you. So see, God's got a purpose for you and I in life. And uh, 
we'll talk more about that as we go along. We all have a purpose and we all have an assignment in life. You believe that? We all have a purpose and we all have an assignment. I want you to think about that. What's your assignment this morning? What's your purpose this morning? You know, we come to church. I love to come to church. I'm going to tell you why. Not do I only like to worship, but I like to have fun with y'all. I, I enjoy having fun more than anything I know. Just being with people that love me and I love them and I don't have to worry about hurting their feelings. We just love one another. I did that last night. I had such a good time aggravating Darlene. I'm going to close this morning with something I've done a lot of times. I want to share a story with you. Now, I've done this. several. I do it maybe once, twice a year anyway. But I want you to understand this. You are a solution to somebody. Somebody needs you. Somebody out there is depending upon you. They don't know it yet. But God's going to use you to help them because we all have a purpose in life. And I'm going to be closing a little bit early so we can have time to water up and fellowship. Or if you want to talk about something, we can. But it's the story that I've shared with you many times, and God gave it to me years ago. Don't even know where I got it, but I kept it. First of all, I want to tell you what about unity. One of the definitions for unity is this. Uniting ourselves to the need of someone who is in distress. Uniting ourselves to the need of someone who is in distress or needs help. That's what unity is. That's one definition for unity. People need help today. People are in distress. That's why the Lord impressed me to share this story with you. It's talking about a, a desperate man. You've heard this from me, I know, more than once, but it, bear with me. A desperate person, not a man, a person, a broken-hearted person fell into a deep, dark hole. There's some deep, dark holes out there this morning, class, church. There's some deep, dark holes that people are literally, literally perishing in, and they don't know what to do. They're addicted, they're, they're hurting. This deep, dark hole had marriage problems in it. It, it had bondage of debt in there. It had the spirit of depression in there and the spirit of oppression in there. This deep, dark hole was a miserable place. And in this deep, dark hole, this person could find no way out. Have you ever seen anybody in that deep, dark hole? They couldn't get out. We have a purpose. We have an assignment. We have a solution. Christopher, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? But he continued, to, he continued to yell for help. Imagine it. He was yelling deep within his heart, help. A physician, a physician walked by and he wrote some prescriptions. And he put them in the hole. That's all he knew to do. Because he never had found the Savior that you're serving today. A religious person came by. We've got a lot of religious people. They wrote a few scriptures. Put them in the hole. But they were just scriptures. It didn't work. A friend passed by, a friend. I'd like to think this friend was a Christian person. I know he was, or she was. A friend passed by, and he heard the cry. And he jumped into that deep, dark hole. He didn't write no... He wasn't like the religious man. He jumped in there. And this person said, what are you doing? There's no way out of here. I've tried. I can't get out. And here's what the, I believe the Christian brother said, or Christian sister. I've been here before, and I know the way out. 
God has a solution in life. He's got an assignment for each one of us. There's some deep, dark holes out there that you're going to have to participate in and to help pull some people out of. I know many people today that are hurting. Some of them I don't know how to help. I haven't heard from God how to do it. But when the time's right, he'll show me how to jump into that hole. And he'll show you how to jump into that hole. So that's why I want to teach this lesson this morning, not only how much God loves us, but what he, what he expects out of you and I as we become his disciples. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson because it was, it was told me, the Holy Spirit told me to teach it because we're living in a time of perilousness. We really are. The world doesn't see it. This situation in Iran is very serious. I was talking to me and the pastor a little bit last night about it. There's a day coming when Persia, Iran, Iraq, and Russia, there's a day coming when God's going to say enough is enough. I don't know if the church will see this or not. I hope we're raptured out, but if we're not, we may see part of it. And God's going to put a hook in the jaw and say, come down here. They're going to say, we don't want to come on anyway. And he's going to, they're going to pay the price for what they're doing to the nation of Israel. See, that's coming. We're living in those days. So that's why God told me this morning, said, teach something to let them know how much I love you. Starting at conception. That's why I wanted to put that picture up. Starting at conception. The mother that's carrying the child and the mother that already has the child. God loves them both the same. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. That's, I'm going to cut it short. We're going to give you time to water up and fellowship. And uh, remember, this is Pastor Appreciation Day. Still, it's still going on. Last night started, still going on. So, God bless you this morning. That's my lesson. Amen. Thank you.